Good morning, and I pray your Sabbath is blessed beyond your dreams, because God is good all the time. I trust He's helping you weather the storms of your life and is giving you peace. Can you believe? This is the sixth Sabbath we are meeting virtually. Of course, there is no news on when we will be able to meet in person. But in the meantime, let us make the most of the digital age and remain connected. For today's broadcast, I'm happy to share that the worship coordinating team is the youth department. Worship and music, testimony, children's story, and scripture come straight from the heart of our youth. What a tremendous help and inspiration they are for all of us. God is surely working in a mighty way through them. I know we miss seeing each other face to face each week, but even so. This is amazing. We are able to gather together virtually to worship. And the passage still holds true in Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there with them. This passage is not limited to place and time. It doesn't matter that we aren't gathering together on the church campus right now. This passage holds true no matter where we are gathered. Homes, Zoom conference, Google Hangout, FaceTime, Facebook Live, or YouTube. Right now, you have made an appointment to connect with God along with your church family and anyone watching this broadcast. And God promises to be with us. God promises to be with you. Let me pray for God to guide our hearts as we watch this broadcast together. Father in heaven, bless each one of us watching live and rewinding this broadcast. Bless the participants, those that produced it. Bless each one of us with your presence, with your comfort, with your goodness, with the sense that we are connecting with your heart, regardless of place and time. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you as we participate together in viewing this broadcast. Death. 
This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. Good morning and happy Sabbath from my house. From today's talk to story, we're going to talk about being the body of Christ. And that's Tatum in the backyard. Now, as you see, I have three glasses here and I'm going to drink each one and describe to you what they are. And hopefully at the end, I will... Um, uh, I will enjoy the concoction I make at the end, and I don't know what these will be, because I kind of forgot. Okay, bottoms up. Okay, this one is very sour. So, sometimes we think we can do things by ourselves, and it ends up being really sour. Oh, this is water. So sometimes we do things too by ourselves and we're just kind of plain. Okay. Oh, and this is super sweet. So sometimes we do things by ourselves and we're just sweet. But really, at the end, we have to do things together because we are a body of Christ. Not one person is more important than the other. And when we work together, we make something sweet and delicious. Oh, snap. That's actually really good. Lemonade. So, always remember, you're part of a really big body of Christ. And each part of you, each one of us, has an important role here in the church. When we work together, we make something delicious. And I hope you do that too as well. Enjoy today. Happy Sabbath. And we'll see you again next Sabbath. Bye. I want to take time now during this broadcast to focus on how we can worship God together outside of a worship service. When we gladly return tithe and give a free will offering, we are worshiping God with all our heart. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. I hear from the treasurer that online donations continue to come in. You are going to the website at Temple City sdachurch.org and clicking the giving link to donate online. And many of you are returning your tithe and offering through the U.S. mail. And either way works fine. Donate online or drop your check in the mail. 9664 Broadway, Temple City, 91780. And by the way, if you ran out of tithe envelopes, Simply earmark your donations on the check or on a note. Tithe will continue to be transferred to the conference and the offering will be used according to your earmark. We especially continue to need operating budget offering even though the campus is shut for services because we still have all of the usual expenses. Utility bills, property tax, repairs, and upkeep of the church facility. Thank you for your faithful contributions to tithe and the local budget. Remember, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Matthew 6.33 Let me pray for you. Father, bless the tithe and offering that each worshiper, each member, contributes to this church to this global church and to the local Seventh-day Adventist Church in Temple City. Bless every penny so we can finish this work and you can return 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Hello, church family. Hope you guys are all doing safe. Hope you're all staying uh, nice, cooped up indoors, safe from the, uh, from the virus. Um, I was asked to share about my experiences in this quarantine, how I'm coping with it. And um, for the first two weeks of the quarantine, I uh, became a little bit of a couch potato and played a lot of video games. When school started up again, it was interesting having to relive the whole homeschool experience um, video calling teachers, taking care of assignments all online, having very loose deadlines and all that stuff. Um, for me, or for at least for my schooling, I'm on sort of block schedule. So Monday and Wednesdays, I have a set of classes and then the Tuesday, Thursdays, I have a set of classes and Fridays is kind of like a free day to, uh, catch up on things you haven't done and, uh, contact teachers at designated hours for help and then so on. Um, for the most part, when I'm not doing schoolwork, I'm doing something leisurely like playing video games or uh, watching YouTube on my laptop and so on. Um, in terms of staying active, it's kind of hard because you can't really you know, go outside during this time. So I have to um, I have to work with what I got. I, I try to get as much exercise as I can even during these times. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges for me was um or is uh trying to find something to do in these times because at some point you, i don't know if, i don't know if anyone else can relate to this but for me personally i can run out of things to do and it's sometimes very hard to like break out of that like what do i do beyond this point you know when you settle like if i settle into the routine at some point i'm gonna get tired of it so uh there's certain routines like certain games I've gotten really tired of playing but at the same time I don't know what else to play so it's kind of an over struggle um, it's more of like a personal thing not sure how many of you can actually relate to that one but uh, yeah uh, I've been in terms of benefits I've been getting a lot more sleep I've been sleeping earlier um, it feels nice to take a little break from the stress of uh, actually going to school um, I think staying in contact with my friends is something I've been trying to work on at least to those who I can reach out to and overall it's been okay so far for me and um, I hope that you guys are all safe you know, able to find something to do to entertain yourselves while we're all at home uh, I pray that you guys are safe when you guys go out for groceries and other essentials and so on because it can be quite a riot in Costco, Whole Foods, and other stores in general. You know, no rice, no toilet paper, that sort of thing. Um, once again, I wish, I wish you safe. Uh, God bless. Yo, it's good to see you. Like that, you know, we just, right? I we... don't know what you're going for. Hey, happy Sabbath. How's it going? Just want to give you a small glow update. All right, so I have three tips for you. Three, okay? One, two, three, uno, dos, tres. Espanol people, what's good? Tip number one, I want you to pray. All right, don't just pray for yourself. Pray for the people, pray for our country. Pray for people, all right? Make sure you know, all right? I said pray for people. All right, tip number two, okay? All right, let me, I have to pause this. Tip number two, dose, dose, no dose, just tip number two, all right? When you go outside, I want you to smile at people. I feel like what a lot of people do is they walk around, they have their heads down, they're scared, they're like, yo, yo, just keep your distance. Hey, all right, we gotta keep our distance doesn't mean we can't be kind to one another. Be empathetic, sympathetic. So I want you to smile. I want you to be like How you doing? Good to see you. It helps people, make them feel good, makes, you feel, makes yourself feel good as well. All right, and number three. I keep forgetting to pause it. Thress is I want you to be creative and imaginative, okay? Don't just be sitting there consuming content, all right? 
get off the Disney Plus a little bit, take a break. Maybe get off the Netflix, take a little bit of a break, and I want you to create something for somebody else, okay? Like this one girl in Arroyo Grande in California. That's a name, that's a, that's a city name right there, right? She's 12 years old, her name is Charlotte. She's sewing together face masks so that then she can deliver them to neighbors and put a glow track up, all right? A lot of you have some free time, all right? Some of you are just playing Fortnite. I need you to be creative and do something amazing for somebody else. You have the ability and the power. You have the ability and the power. You have the ability and the power. All right, Matthew 24 verse 12 says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Ooh, I'm feeling cold right now. That's so cheesy. I know. Hi everyone, who here enjoys embarrassing videos? Who here enjoys embarrassing videos of themselves? Okay, I actually don't, but um, I am going to share one with you because that's what you do when you need content. It was actually a homework assignment that I did in my last year of college for my American Sign Language class. So instead of the lyrics to the actual song th that usually will be playing at the bottom of the screen, I am going to share with you what I shared with my um, ASL professor, which is the ASL version of the lyrics. It's gonna sound kind of wonky, it's not gonna rhyme, but um, I think it'll be interesting and we'll all learn something about American Sign Language today. So enjoy my embarrassing video. Every day we go to war again. We assume we know so much more than them. For we hear what they have to say. Headline breaks and we start to hate again. Calling them names again. We give our peace away I hope they see it Cause I wanna see it I hope we believe I wanna see, I wanna see the love All around Learn to begin again. 
again Open our eyes again To see our brother's pain I hope they see it Cause I want to see it I hope we believe it I want to see I want to see the love I want to see the love I want to Church family, it's time to pray together. During these next few minutes, as this worship song plays, I invite you to join with your family, or if you're by yourself in this broadcast, connect your heart to God just now through prayer. Take time to pray over your requests, to go through your list, to think about loved ones, and those suffering from COVID-19 or any needs you have, trust in the Lord. He hears your prayer and will answer according to his goodness for his glory. May God bless you during this prayer time. Bowing here, I find my rest And without you, I fall apart And you're the one that guides my heart And Lord, I need you, oh, I need you
song to rise to you When temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay And when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Our scripture this morning is Revelation 5, verses 1 to 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Well, good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. What a privilege for us to gather together again in this virtual setting as we praise and worship God. I do pray and hope all of you have had a great week and God has been good to you in every way. I want to talk to you for a few moments today about uh, this passage from the title I've chosen, The Conquest, from Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. You know, sometimes events in my life cause me to feel the pain of Bible writers. Last month, my father passed away on March the 4th, and uh, I want to say thanks to all of you for your kind support and um, encouragement. Many of you sent texts and emails and cards and prayers and even small gifts. And I want you to know your words helped to encourage me and console me during this time. Two days before my scheduled flight to Toronto to attend my dad's funeral, the Canadian government imposed a mandatory 14-day quarantine on all incoming travelers. And a day later, the funeral home called to say, we can only have five people at the graveside service. So would you believe I could not even attend my dad's funeral? This made me feel caught and trapped and enslaved like a captive. But I know I'm not alone because all of us feel a level of captivity right now. And all of us must deal valiantly with the feelings of being trapped and isolated, separated, and socially distanced from loved ones and friends. I've joined that group who had to bury their dead in a virtual service setting. And I tell you, nothing could prepare me to deal with the loss of a loved one amidst isolation while in quarantine and forced to socially distance from family and friends and loved ones. 
But this event made me feel the Apostle John's pain in this passage. He too was isolated on the Isle of Patmos during Roman persecution. What a tragedy when hope seems far and help seems distant. And not just for me, but for so many others, separated and isolated, shut down, locked in and quarantined while their loved ones, friends get sick and perish all around them. Our hearts go out to so many who have lost loved ones while isolated and quarantined and required to attend burial, burials virtually. So I think all of us can identify with John the Revelator in his pain. He too sat isolated, banished, quarantined, and lonely on the island of Patmos. And yes, I'm sure he rejoiced in Christ's conquest over sin and death, but I can't help thinking how he wished Christ had conquered Rome. Imagine John, the youngest disciple, surviving Emperor Domitian's uh, persecuting murder of Christian friends John knew and loved so well. He forced John into exile and social distancing, banishment and isolation, just like us. He must have wondered, how long will I be isolated? When will I see my friends and family again? When will I meet with my church family again? And where can I find God in my quarantine? In my imagination, I see John looking heavenward for hope and help. And thanks be to God, heaven did not disappoint him. Jesus Christ, our Lord, revealed himself in a vision. Jesus interrupts the nightmare of John's pain with this vision we read as the book of Revelation. One thing I love about my Jesus, he shows up in our isolation with a heavenly connection. He shows up in our deepest loneliness with his presence. And he shows up in our sickness with his healing. He shows up in our darkness with light. He shows up in our sadness with comfort. He shows up in our worries with peace. And he shows up in our fears with a new measure of faith. I see John in his persecution, wondering, who's in charge up there? John hears and sees in this vision, heart-cheering, soul-thrilling truth. In Revelation chapters 1 to 3, Jesus walks among the seven golden candlesticks, indicating he's moving and present among the churches. He declares to each one exactly who they are as a church. He declares the nature and characteristics of each congregation. He speaks of their individual strengths and failures. He counsels them and makes promises to those who are faithful. This vision of Jesus indicates that he is not isolated, socially distanced, or quarantined. Hallelujah for the Lamb of God. He lives, he loves, and reigns in the churches. Just imagine the joy and hope John feels after this scene. Then, in Revelation chapter 4, John peers through an open door in heaven. He sees God still on the throne and all heaven worshiping. What a mighty God we serve, who gives John a glimpse of this heavenly inauguration scene while banished and isolated at Patmos. No doubt this glorious scene brings him great joy and gladness, and it can bring us great joy too. It warms our hearts and brings us great joy just to know that this earthly shutdown cannot stop the heavenly realm. COVID-19 pandemic can't scare God into six-foot separation protocols. And Revelation chapter 4 assures both John and us that nothing can stop the hope of heaven, the goal of glory, or the dream of divinity. Heaven stands open. Its glory still shines and shimmers with radiant light. And God still stirs on the throne. But then comes that strong angel in Revelation chapter 5 verse 2. He proclaims with a loud voice, Who is worthy? to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. In John's day, they used sealed scrolls like this one to contain and secure legal documents like wills, court judgments, and contract deeds. But I recall in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, another scripture talking about a sealed book. There we read, 
but thou, Daniel, seal up the book even till the time of the end. Now John sees a sealed book that none in heaven can open. This scene dramatizes the pain of isolation, separation, and quarantine. Imagine, no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth was able to open the sealed book, nor look thereon. And this scene, for a moment, here it looks like heaven, had no answers. Finding somebody to open this sealed scroll seemed like a problem that heaven couldn't solve. A question heaven couldn't answer. They couldn't find anybody up in heaven or in the earth or under the earth worthy and qualified to open and read these legal documents. That means nobody celestial or terrestrial or subterranean qualified. No angel, no man or demon has the wisdom and knowledge and power to execute judgment, to accept the contract deal or execute the will. Nobody worthy to orchestrate human history and direct the pathway of human affairs. And John says he wept much because they didn't find anybody worthy to open this sealed book. That likely spoke of humanity's future. If our every hope depends on heaven's victory, but heaven can't find anybody worthy, then this vision quickly turns from bright to dim. It must have felt like a divine letdown and a heavenly failure for John. I can hear John saying, you mean to tell me that while I'm shut down, isolated, quarantined, and, uh, and calling on heaven, you're going to show me a vision indicating something heaven can't do? What does this mean for us on earth if heaven can't find anybody worthy to open the judgment scroll? What does it mean that for me and my problem, my dilemma, did it mean earth's injustices would never be righted? Did it mean the righteous would not be vindicated? Did it mean the wicked would not be punished? Did it mean the kingdom won't come and earth won't be purged? What does it mean for us if heaven can't find anybody worthy? John wept much because they couldn't find anybody worthy. And we would weep too if this vision had stopped here. We would weep if heaven lacks answers, for then so many earthly situations could never be shifted. But I'm so glad heaven answered just in time. John hears an elder say, Don't weep. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah has conquered and he can open the book. But when John turned and looked, he didn't see a lion. He saw a lamb. The picture of the lion indicates what Jesus did. He conquered like only a lion can conquer. The picture of the lamb shows how he conquered. He conquered like a lamb through humility and surrender. And my dear Christian friends, the quest for conquest and victory lives in all of us. But Jesus says to you and to me, I want you to have my victory. And next week in chapter six and seven, we will see how Jesus orchestrates the gospel to conquer every human heart and how he sets us up as a victorious church and community. But this chapter teaches us that the man Christ Jesus is sovereign. He's sovereign because he's worthy. And he's worthy because his sinless life, his sacrificial death, and his victorious resurrection makes him worthy to rule in every heart. Oh, I got to quit now. But when he takes that scroll, all heaven erupts in praise and worship. He is worthy to take the scroll and claim the deed to the universe. He's worthy to open the scroll and conquer hearts with the gospel. All heaven knows what so many earthlings fail to comprehend. For every situation, our safety, our health, our jobs, our economics, our families, and every aspect of our lives, Jesus Christ is sovereign. He is the rightful ruler intended to reign in every human heart. And in this heavenly scene, we see his ever-expanding rule and reign. Just seeing Jesus take the scroll started a praise and worship service up in glory. Oh, I can shout now over all of my issues because I know Jesus reigns. We praise and worship Jesus because he's worthy and sovereign. That's why this act of taking the scroll generates worship in heaven. First, 
the four beasts and the 24 elders start praising and worshiping. Just look at verse 9. The text says, the four beasts and the 24 elders sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take this book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And then it expands to include all the angels praising and worshiping God. Look at verse 12. Uh, all the angels, 10,000 times 10,000, join in saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then all God's creation starts praising and worshiping God. The next verse records every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. John hears them saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. This ever-expanding reign of Christ conquers and comforts each heart. The gospel of Jesus generates the conquest of Jesus and victory in all our hearts. You first let him into your heart and then crown him king of your life. Either you make him Lord of all or well, he can't be Lord at all. Accepting the good news of the gospel means you rest in his grace and his salvation, recognizing his sovereignty and lordship in your life, and you honor him, praise him, and worship him because he's worthy. Our praise is the expression of our joy in surrender to the will of God. But our worship is the natural human response to the awesomeness of God. I want to pray for you today that no matter your situation in this pandemic, you will allow the gospel of Jesus Christ to open your heart and let him conquer and rule all areas of your life and then worship him because he's worthy of all. Gracious God, we thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you for your grace, your goodness, your glory, and your grandeur. We thank you, O God, that in spite of our situation, we can trust in the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. We can trust that he's worthy and he's able to take the book, to open the seals, and to direct human history. He's able to orchestrate the affairs of our lives. And Lord, today we worship him and we praise him for his goodness, for his grace, we trust that our lives are in his hands and he's got his hands in our business and he's got the whole world in the shelter of his palm. Bless us now. Fill us with your grace, your goodness, your glory, and your grandeur. Bless each one of our people, our members, our congregation, our church worldwide listening to this message today. May their hearts be filled and their souls be watered by accepting Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Thank you. 